Today, we're talking to, to, to top hotel management companies and trying to figure out how they are saving money. It is May 6, 2020. Ain't that right, Anthony? You ready that's to get correct. going? I think that's correct, brother. Let's go. Let's, let's have a good show. Well, 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 Mr. Anthony Melchiri. Great to see you again today, sir. What's up? Uh, what's up, my brother from a Jewish mother? How are you? <laughs> I like that. And I do have a Jewish mother. That's right. That makes me 100% Jew, according to, uh, to tradition out there. But, Anthony, I got to tell you, Redline Hotel Corporation and Radisson have both come out with their cleaning standards today. And uh, the, the airlines are, are talking about what their policy is going to be, too. You know, I, I, I read through those guidelines. I saw them posted, and I'm going to repost them later. Um, and it seems like everyone's doing the same thing, and a lot of it is common sense. And um, But really, the key is to focus on it because mm -hmm. you know, one of the things we're going to talk about today is how you can save expenses because one of the things that we just have to deal with, and, and Rob from um, uh, Motel 6, and what's the name of his? From uh, G6. From G6, said that our expenses are going to go up 5 to 6% just based on cleaning. So what are some ways of saving? I think we're going to talk through that. And it's um, things that I've done in my career. So this should be an interesting show. And um, you look uh, extra handsome today, my friend. Uh, hey, thank you very much. But before we go live, I do want to mention that I got a note yesterday from uh, Delta Airlines that I thought was uh, kind of uh, important about what their policies are going to be. Uh, going in the future. They're going to be requiring masks to keep everyone safe, as we know, but they're going to be limiting the number of people you pass on the way to your seat, and they're going to be doing back-to-front boarding with cap seating at 50% in first class and 60% in the main cabin, and they're created new seating policies to keep the middle seat blocked. What do you think of that? I, think I read through that, and I think that that's outstanding, and I think it's necessary, and I think Anything less than that is going to be uncomfortable and people aren't going to want to fly. So I think it's it's necessary. It's uh, it's a necessary evil. You know, I was talking to a senator yesterday uh, that, that got in touch with me and hopefully we'll have him on the show. And he's on the committee that's helping bring Washington, D.C.'s hotels back. Mm -hmm. And he's been asking a lot of policies. As a matter of fact, I have two emails from him I got to get back to him on. And I said to him, I said, look at what the airlines are doing. Look what the big brands are doing. I will give you some perspective. You know, you have to obviously talk to uh, doctors. But a lot of it is coming down to a lot of common sense. And to me, although that's creative, it really is common sense. Keep the middle seat blocked. You know, uh, back to front and 50 percent for first class is fine. 60 percent um, for economy is it sounds right. So if it sounds right, it's going to feel right. Right. Uh, everything's right. So just hold tight. But here's something that's not right, Anthony. In my opinion, Frontier Airlines is going to be charging people with their more room pledge. So you have the you can pay up to thirty nine dollars, up to eighty nine dollars to have that middle seat empty. How do you feel about that? Um, listen, everyone has got a price point and everyone has got to make a deal with the devil, right? So I make, make a deal with the devil with saying, Hey, I'm going to go, go to business class and spend more money if I can afford it. Um, and if, well, if I don't have a lot of money, um, maybe I'll have to go to spirit airlines, but right. I want to be safe. So I'm going to spend a couple dollars to get the most seat. So I don't think it's wrong. Everybody's price point is different. And everyone's got to make their own decisions. And that price point for another 50 bucks, I can get, you know, a little bit more room and feel a little freer. Where is in, you know, I'm going to, if I take business class, I'm going to get myself more room. I'm going to feel right. a little safer. So every single person has got to make their own decision. Listen, it's just another, it's just another item on the menu. Yeah. Yeah, I, I guess it is. And when you're talking about the, how they've unbundled all these services a number of years, I guess that theory makes sense. You know, I was just talking to the president of the university I went to this morning mm -hmm. and his number one priority is getting those classrooms clean and getting those spaces in his hotel clean. And actually, I put him in touch with my friend, Nicole over Tintas, to how are they going to do that? that? And he said to me, he goes, the expenses are going to go up. And on our next board meeting, Mm -hmm. You know, we, we have to understand that, but how are we going to make sure everybody's safe? And then also please create ideas for the next board meeting of how we're going to save money. So, right. you know, right now, again, it comes back to common sense, see what best practices are. You know, I was in a meeting, not a meeting, but when uh, uh, Jack Welch was giving a speech years ago at the um, uh, Venetian Hotel in Vegas, mm -hmm. uh, I was up front and I'm sitting there, I'm listening to every word he says, and he said, you, somebody said, what's the secret of your success? He said, 
I don't steal patents, but I steal ideas. He goes, <laughs> that is what I've made my career on. I look at what other people are doing it. I make it my own. And I thought that that was, you know, that's what we have to think about right now. Not every single person is going to have the right answer. You know, I was supposed to do a commencement speech at my university this weekend, mm -hmm. and I'm going to do a two minute commencement speech. And basically in that speech, it's going to be now is the time for entrepreneurs to knock down the door. Don't ask for forgiveness. Ask for permi don't ask for permission. Ask for forgiveness. And so right now we just need everyone to keep their eyes open, look at their competition, look at how they save money. But most of what we're talking about is common sense. Right. Well, you want to talk about forgiveness. We got a, we got a crew of people here that don't ask for forgiveness. They give their all. So let's get into our main show talk. You know what's amazing about you, Glenn? That yes, you sir. cut yourself off. You know, I can see other people cutting you off. <laughs> you cut yourself off. Well, I come to the realization that I really don't have anything important to say. It's really all about getting you focused because uh, you're you're the brains of this operation. Remember? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> all right. All right. Welcome to the show with Mr. Gary Ranson of HP Hotels, Cal Patel of Crest Point, Mark Ricketts of McNeil, and Rick West of Commercial Green Solutions. Guys, I am so excited to have you all here today. Man, we all know the management companies have been uh, running into a lot of challenges and stuff like that. So to start, we're hoping we could get a real good update about what you were experiencing this week. Mark, uh, let's start with you, sir. Well, you know, we, we've had some fairly good success uh, at, at several of our hotels. We've been able to uh, land a couple of big groups, so it's kind of taken the pressure, um, you know, off of that. So, yeah, we actually had one hotel that actually achieved budget uh, in terms of occupancy in the month of April. Didn't hit it in rate, but, uh, you know. <laughs> well, he's <laughs> yeah, got a good attitude about it. Well, if they didn't yeah. make it, I hope you fire that whole team. Um, <laughs> so tell me what kind of hotels you have. How big is your portfolio so people know? Sure. it's uh, We have 25 hotels, uh, select service, uh, extended stay. We, we focus on Hilton, Marriott. We have two higher places. Um, but our extended stay, you know, and it, it, it's come up, you know, a couple times you guys have talked about it. The extended stay brands have really done well for us. Uh, you know, they've kind of exceeded the, the norm. We're mostly in secondary cities and college towns. So we have 11 hotels and college towns, uh, and we have 10 extended stay hotels. So those, those are kind of dry. You know, and, uh, and when people do go back to school, a lot of the kids are going to want to stay out of the dorms and maybe you know, figure out a rate to be able to stay in an extended hotel or something like that. Uh, because in my door, did somebody's... Uh, uh, my, I think it was uh, Kerry because he's outside. Kerry, uh, I muted you. We'll, we'll bring you on in a sec. Don't worry. And um, I think that there's going to be a lot of options, especially in college towns. Um, so, uh, Cal, how about you? So we are located out here in Cincinnati, Ohio. We have about 11 hotels, um, mostly select service, extended stay within Ohio and Kentucky. Um, your Holiday Inn Expresses, Hampton, Home 2, Fairfield, Spring Hill. Um, you know, most of the hotels have been hovering anywhere between 10 and 15 percent. We have a couple of outliers that are in the 20 to 30 percent. Um, and those are mostly because we're we reached out way early in advance to um, all the Department of Health agencies, the emergency management folks. And so we ended up at two of our hotels picking up about 20 rooms uh, to help out with the homeless. And one of our other hotels, we've been taking in folks that are uh, domestic violent uh, cases Wonderful. and whatnot, and they have nowhere to go. They can't go to a homeless shelter. Um, so, you know, we're, we're hanging, hanging through it. We haven't closed any of our properties. You know, wow. you know, you know before this, you know, the most vulnerable, you know, um, people that people wouldn't think about giving them a hotel room because of the image. I think that that's one of the ways that a lot of these hotels are surviving. And, it, and also doing a good deed. Kerry, what's going on in your neck of the woods? Yeah, so we we have uh, 31 hotels, um, kind of southeast and some Midwest as well. And, you know, what's funny is in the last week and a half, we've probably grown a portfolio by about five and a half percent. Wow. Um, and, and so you've, uh, you've, you've doubled your, uh, your, yeah. your occupancy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's it. We actually may survive this month. Um, but a lot of the similar uh, stories that, that Cal and Mark had 
brought up as well as far as con the consumer in the in the hotels um, we've got a few too where we've done some day rooms for medical mm -hmm. personnel as well as folks wanting to potentially office uh, in, in, a, in a secure environment which is right. a guest room so we've done a lot of day rooms as well uh, which has assisted us but it's amazing in the month for the month uh, has looked great we you know if you're marking pickup by day uh, Friday last week, I think we had picked up for the month of May one day across the portfolio about 80 grand in right. revenue, which is at this time, you know, look, we'll take it and we're happy with it. Uh, Gary, you got way too much wind over there. Um, maybe you could, uh, maybe we could reposition you to somewhere unless you've got, uh, you could strike a deal with, uh, with the good Lord up there to cut the, uh, the, the wind or maybe, maybe try one of these things to prevent the, uh, the, the, the breeze. So, you know, so one of the things that we've been talking about and to, to just uh, maybe we want to um, just mute his mic for a minute. Yeah, I'm going to I'm going to mute him. But um, go ahead. Go ahead. You know, one of the things we've been talking about constantly is hygiene and cleanliness and the expense driven there. And one of the reasons we asked Rick to come on is because we want to talk about how we are going to spend more money on, on hygiene. It's the right thing to do. we got to keep our people safe. we got to keep our guests safe. Um, and then how do we save money? So we're going to bring Rick in in a second. But before we do that, Mark and Cal, what are you like doing to keep your employees and guests safe? And is that increasing, the bottom, is that increasing your costs? Sure. Uh, so oh, you want to go ahead, Mark? Let's go, let's go with Cal first since Mark spoke first last time. <laughs> so one of the things that, you know, we've always done is kept our rooms 99.99% germ-free. We've always cleaned them with disinfectants, whatnot. So we've had guests come in. We've had, um, you know, those questions. What are you guys doing different now? Well, we've kept our rooms clean. What we're asking you to do now is to keep your distance, try to, you know, protect yourself. Um as far as staff goes, we have had some staff that are, I just don't feel safe. Um, but, you know, I don't know if ultimately that's the reason or if it's because they're getting paid more sitting at home versus coming in and working with us. Um, but, you know, we've put in the protocols of making sure they're wearing gloves. Again, they were doing it before. The only difference is now we've got the face mask that they're all required to put on whenever they're working or guest facing. Um, so if they're going in the room. Is, is there more, Mark, are you doing other things for the room? Are you doing things in public areas? What are your standards for the elevators? Um, things like that. Yeah, so to that point, I mean, we uh, we partnered with Ecolab. They've been able to give us some posters. So we have them, you know, in the lobby. We have them in the elevators. We have them in the landings, just kind of talking through the process that we're going through just to kind of reemphasize what we're doing. Uh we text the guest, uh, you know, kind of let them know, hey, you know, here's the extra touch points that we're doing to get along with that. But, you know, as Cal said, we, you know, we do have some associates that are still a little bit nervous to come back and they've kind of, you know, ask off. We've added the plexiglass, you know, at the front desk, uh, you know, to prove, you know, to, to provide that shield. We've basically just gone to breakfast bags, uh, you know, in, in all of our hotels, uh, you know, so, and, and we've kind of readjusted our lobby to kind of create that social distancing spot. So, uh, you know, with, with, with some of our newer hotels, they already have the space. So that's not been that difficult to do. But we have a couple older Hamptons and it's already crammed. So, I mean, you know, to try to figure out and, uh, you know, one of the things that, that we face, uh, we have two hotels in Destin, Florida. Right. And, you know, the beach is just opened on Friday. And the biggest challenge for us has been the social distancing at the pool. You know, everybody thinks, hey, I'm outside. But, right. you know, we've really had a full time person just out there making sure that, you know, we meet those requirements. Great. And how about Kerry? What have you been doing um, as far as keeping the guest employees safe? And uh, how is that co you know, is cost creeping up? Yeah, so look, same things. Uh, I think some of the things we've tried to do too, Anthony, is in some of the assets that have the digital key component is really trying to push and promote that as well. Um, and, you know, one, it, it, you know, to have that, you've got to be a frequent uh, stay member for that particular brand or franchise. And so we've done that, but similar things, 
uh, where you've, we stanchioned off some areas where we struggle with space, like the uh, Hampton uh, example. Uh, but we've also done the plexi in front of the, 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 uh, the guest registration and then in the elevators, you know, more cleaning and whatnot. So, you know, currently the only your your costs from that standpoint are going up. Uh, I think there's some efficiency components in the guest rooms where we won't clean the guest room until they check out. Uh, we're pre-packaging supplies and whatnot and leaving eating room areas for the consumer and the guests to pick up. Uh, but that's been some of the things that we've done at the different assets. Uh, and I, and, you know, to, to Cal's point, it's like you've been cleaning the rooms. That's that's fine, and everybody that's the expectation. But now I want to see you clean the rooms. So that's going to be more expensive because I want to see how it's been cleaning the doorknobs. I want to see how it's been cleaning the elevator buttons. I want to see. Oh, my not me specifically. He actually wants me to see do something. <laughs> <laughs> I, I want to see Glenn, you know, cleaning the buttons in the uh, elevators. And, and so that's going to increase costs. So, Rick, you know, one of the things that I've done over my career is always trying to find expenses because when you hire me as a general manager, um, I kind of get creative. And sometimes that creativity is expensive. So I always, before I bring it up to my their owner, I always look at ways to save money. So tell me a little bit about your company and tell me how people uh, can kind of talk to you about saving money. Yeah, absolutely. You know, we're, we're energy consultants, right? And, you know, these three guys actually that are on this podcast, you know, they, they've, they've worked with me for a long time. Mm -hmm. And so we're just looking for those things to save money on the energy bills. Right. And uh, Glenn, I'm just going to go ahead and, you know, when I, you I'm, I'm bracing for a foghorn leghorn uh, impersonation right now. So I have to do it, right? Because we talked about it. We've already given the clearance. And like the three guys on this would be just this, uh, this, uh, imper this impersonation does no way um, affect our opinions here. And we're not taking any sides. Go ahead. Let's hear your great impression. I signed no waiver before I did it. I want to make that clear. No, it's like when you, when you say energy consultant, right? What that means in this industry. You know, I've been around a long time and, and, and working with it. And CGS has been around a long time and trying to help folks out. But it means different things to different people. And the best example I can give is I went and did a presentation. And the three guys, again, I was, last time I referred to y'all, you've seen my PowerPoint so many times you want to puke. I mean, I get it. You, you've seen it. And so I go into this meeting about a year and a half ago and I give my PowerPoint explaining what it is CGS does. And I'm like, you know, we want to look at your bills. We want to find those mistakes. You know, we want to find you refunds. We want to find you savings going forward, you know. And savings for energy, savings for energy. Yeah, exactly. We want to look at your utility bills and find out, you know, if you've been screwed along the way or if you're being as a bill as efficiently as possible. Then once we do that, then we want to see, OK, now that we've seen the bills, are there ways to cut consumption? Because these technologies may exist that can help you cut that consumption and thus cut your bills as well. And then I want to go to the utility companies mm -hmm. and get them to pay for it. <laughs> you know, make this as non-CapEx as possible so you're not writing checks. And I give this presentation. I felt so great about myself. I'm not going to lie to you. It was really good. I mean, I killed it. And the dude looked straight at me. And he was a Southern guy. God bless him. A little bit older than me. Not that much older than me. But he kind of spoke like a combination of Foghorn, Leghorn, and Colonel Mustard. <laughs> and he looked at me and said, well, Rick, uh, so what you're trying to say to me is that you could sell me my energy cheaper. And I'm like, no, no, that's 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 not what I said at all. So I I went back and I, I showed him a couple more slides. And I'm like, I go through it again. I'm like, look, we're going to look at your bills. We're going to find mistakes. We're going to hand you money, non-CapEx. It's going to be great. And then after that, we're going to figure out way, more ways for you to save. And I'm going to get the utility companies to pay for it. He paused and he said, oh, I get it. So in other words, uh, if I work with CGS, I will buy my energy cheaper. <laughs> oh, goodness. So I look at him and as a good sales guy, I'm like, yeah, I'll sell your energy cheaper. Right. <laughs> sure. <laughs> well, yeah. he wound up saving money, so I guess it all wins. And a little show note, um, Rick will be at the Chuckle Hut in Fort Lauderdale all <laughs> weekend long. Uh, it's a good thing with the show social distancing. You don't have to worry about people showing up to see you. I, no one ever does. But what, what I was going to say with that is just simply that what people think an energy consultant does oftentimes is just a piece of it. And you may have someone as an energy consultant who does a piece. Right. 
But what you need is someone, and there are a lot of good folks out there, not just us, who go out there. But the key is really learning the client well enough that you know what their needs are and you become an extension of them being proactive. So if you find out they're giving away free, free thermostats in Georgia, you just reach out to every client you have in Georgia and say, hey, guess what? I'm going to get you free thermostats. I'm going to get you free whatever it is. And so those things are out there. And utility companies don't articulate that extremely well. They're not salespeople. Sure, so sure, that's what sure. I've done with these guys. I apologize, Anthony, for the long answer because no, 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 I was no, no, going to do the foghorn leghorn thing for Glenn. No, 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 no I, I, pre I appreciate that, uh, Anthony. I, I apologize for interrupting you, but you know, one of the things that you can do is Glenn also helps people become better salespeople and better speakers. So apparently, you didn't, you weren't a good salesperson or speaker. Maybe you can use Glenn's <laughs> services. Yeah, uh, yeah. So, 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 but, 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 but that's a good point, you know. And this, this isn't a sales pitch. And what I loved about what you just said is like we're not the only one out there. We have competitors that are that are good, good as well. Very and good. What keeps you is is probably your relationships with these gentlemen and others. Um, so what does that look like, uh, all of you guys, um, in reference to your savings and how does that allow you to spend money on the things, especially coming out of this, um, that we really need to spend money on? Because like I've been saying every single day, I go into one of your hotels and before I would never, ever say anything or go on the internet or call you up and say, hey, you know, this is a problem. That's a problem. That's not what I am. But right now, I guarantee you, when I walk in the hotels, there's going to be a lot of people getting phone calls from me because um, it, this is this is a matter of life and death. So in order to increase those expenses for, for claiming this, how have you saved money on energy, energy? Any one of you can take that. Let's go to Carrie. Yeah, look, we've been doing it for years. It, I mean, right now with the price creeps and the cost creeps that we're going right. to get with doing this, I think it's probably more important forever for us to kind of get back to some of the basics on on these things that Rick's bringing up. We've we've been probably since 04, 05 working uh, with Rick and, and the group. And some of the items for us, you know, I'll use an example is the ozone machines uh, connected to existing washing machines uh, in the laundry. And so what it allows us to do is take hot water out of the the uh, cycle uh, and allows us to end up decreasing water usage as well as the gas usage uh, during the cleaning process, but it, the ozone kills bacteria. So from that standpoint in assets, especially older assets uh, where your, 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 uh, your, your machines are a bit older, it allows us to, uh, to get a bit more use and life out of them as well. And then the other piece too that came in the, this equation is you usually use a fabric softener in, in the process from a cleaning perspective, which you remove because of the ozone, it naturally softens the product. So then I'm taking the fat, animal fat out of having to clean it. So, you know, look, that's one item there. But the other piece is, is you know, as we come out of this, Rick and them have been great with working on all of our assets and coming back and saying, listen, Here's who we can go to for these different utilities, gas, electric, that we can go and get some sub subsidies currently, uh, as well as trying to drag this thing out. You know, whether it's deferrals or drops in cost and in keeping up with it by market's been a great added advantage for us um, right now. And, I'm, you know, I'm no Cal and them will probably have, but that's one example of how we're doing it right now and looking forward. Yeah, it's like a guy with a good banker. Right now. If you have a good banker, you're in good shape. If you have a good energy consultant, you're in good shape. No, it's right. true. And look, I think the relationship piece is this is where I trust Rick and CGS. I mean, if there's, there's things that don't work, he's they've been up front with us over the years and saying, look, we can go spend money on this and you'll have some savings, but the, the return on investment won't work. You know, I couldn't work with, I, I wouldn't be able to work with Rick because I know the second I walk out the door, he's going to make fun of my Brooklyn accent. <laughs> Right. Right. Yeah, you can only make it sound like a southern accent, so yeah. you're uh, you're you're safe. Foghorn Lake is all I got. Think it's, I think the point is is that confidence and trust level. I mean, right. you know, Rick for the first six months, I mean, he was just incessant, and you know, finally he just said, "Give me a chance," you know, and he would he would change his sales pitch. He'd tell a few jokes, and <laughs> and uh, so we you know we we gave him our, our Hampton Inn and Suites in Birmingham and said, "Go with it." He comes back with, I don't know, we're like twelve, thirteen thousand dollars and we're getting ready to open up a Homewood Suites and we pitched it to him and that's where we got the free thermostats. We got a bunch it was like thirty five thousand wow. dollars. And uh, you know, that that was huge, you know, coming out of the gate, you know, with that. And one of the last things he did last fall, and it's 
going to really pay off now is he approached us with a, with a company, uh, Verdant, that uh, does the thermostat controls. And, you know, all of us have been in the hotel business for a long time. And, you know, 20 years ago, they pretty much stunk because, you know, when you went to bed at night, you're just sweating to death and you try to raise your arm up to get the air conditioning to turn on. But uh, Rick reached out uh, and it set us up uh, uh, a meeting with Verdant and we tried two hotels and I think it's what, twenty twenty two thousand $22,000 per property in energy conservation. So we went on and put them into all of our hotels. Uh, so, uh, you know, looking forward, those are some, you know, some savings that we're going to get. Obviously we're not as, as busy as we were hoping to be before for the pandemic, but you know, we do have that thing in place. And again, just being proactive. I mean, Rick is always throwing ideas out and that was a huge home run for us. Right. Right. So what's really cool about it, Mark, I'm I, sorry, Anthony, I was going to say what's really cool too, is we're actually able to get with Mark's, you know, regional chief engineers and through this mess, because it's all remote, we're able to shut down half of his rooms oh. from a cell phone. So the ability to save energy on those rooms that he knew. There's, uh, there's a call use. right now to shut down some rooms. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> right. Sorry, Mark. <laughs> uh, all right. So, um, Mark, so the savings. So I think we've established enough that the savings are so significant that you put up with uh, with Rick's jokes. So I love <laughs> I, I love that. Um, uh, you know, Cal, um, what what about you? You've got you've got places in multiple states. So my guess is things are a little bit different in each of your jurisdictions. Not to say that the other guys don't, but I'd love for you right. to um, focus on that point specifically. Cal. Yeah, definitely. So I had been approached by many other utility savings companies that had for years and we tried one i want to say four or five years ago and it was just a hot mess um a lot of legwork that we had to do that we just didn't have time because obviously it's different now occupancies back then were a lot higher um, and we didn't have the time to really sit down and start going through all this stuff um so carrie actually had introduced well no wait i think i met rick a long time ago and then Carrie kind of reinforced it a couple of years ago and said, hey, you've got to sit down with Rick and go over all this stuff. Thank you, Carrie. Um, well, I don't know if I should be thanking you right. or, uh, right. 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 you know, we got to. OK, um, but yeah, so ended up going ahead and signing up with Rick on a couple of our properties and it was painless. Mm -hmm. He actually did everything for us and got savings for us. So. It was one of those things that, and, and we just did one, I think, what did we start with, Rick? It was the one property up in Easton, I think we did. It was. Yeah, so, um, and I don't even remember all the details on it. I know my uh, ops team, they they were like, Cal, this was awesome. We were saving like $10,000, $12,000. Um, so from that, the relationship has just continued to grow. And Rick probably emails me a little too much, but it's always good <laughs> stuff that he's sending out and saying, hey, here's an area. And it's right. it's not always things that are directly from his company. It's it's even ideas of just, hey, have you thought about this? So that relationship is what's more um, valuable than anything else. Right. So, Rick, yeah. um, what's interesting to me is all the different areas that you could find opportunities. How does that work? I don't want you to give away your secret sauce, but you know, beyond that, I think we were talking about you could get, you know, maybe if a jurisdiction has uh, solar credits, you can find them all sorts of other types of things because each market is very different. It seems like it's a very complex thing. You can't just have one solution in your in your back pocket. Right. Well, yeah. And that, that's kind of that's that's kind of the key is that, you know, we we have a pretty wide catalog and, and so do other folks, too, you know, as far as the offerings. But the key is really knowing the client well enough to knowing what fits where. Mm -hmm. Some of the stuff that I would call Mark about, I wouldn't necessarily call Cal about and same with Carrie. So these guys and, you know, so Concord is a good example. They, you know, we work with them and, and mm -hmm. they, they do hotels like as well as these other three guys do here. And in, in working with them, they didn't realize that there was a, a change in code in Raleigh, North Carolina. So you know why? Because the three guys on this call and those kind of guys, they are great hoteliers. Right. They don't have the ability to become extensions of themselves and know what's going on all around the country mm -hmm. as far as every utility is concerned. 
So a good, a good energy consultant is going to know that and be able to call you up and say, hey, look, you you have a property in, in Raleigh, North Carolina, and you know, we saved that property $38,000 a year because it simply a change in code. And the kick in the butt is these utility companies, I mean, they're not going to come and tell you. Why would they do that? <laughs> so, you know, right. so, so um, every day at noon, uh, come to the Rick West show. Uh, the love is here is unbelievable. Uh, yeah, people but, really like uh, hearing what you guys are saying. I'll tell you that. Yeah, you, know, I, I, you know what? Because it's important. And, you know, one of the things that we're talking about is what you need to do. But we really haven't given a lot of specifics on how to save money and how to uh, make up for some of that more expense that we're going to have. So right. I think what you're saying, and, and again, you, you, all of you are speaking from the heart that one of you are selling his company because he asked you to. It's, you can literally hear it in your voice. And Cal, when you were saying he's he's introducing me to people that he doesn't need to introduce me to, to, and that's what it's about right now. And these are ways to save money. And it's shocking to me because when I have worked with companies in the past and I've told my competitors, friends of mine, say, hey, man, you got to use this company because it doesn't do me any good to not help out my competitors from an expense standpoint. If they can save money, I'll help them out. And they don't do it. And I just never understood that. I never understood. Why would you save money? Uh, why wouldn't you? And especially the thing that all of us want more than anything is we want less work. And I don't, I don't want to do anything, right? Because I have so many things going on. I can vouch for that. All I have to do is wake up in the morning and my day is basically taken, right? I wake up and my hotels are just, just taken up every six seconds. When was the last time anybody had three hours to sit and go through an audit or go through and see how we can save money? And one, I don't have the time. And, and I certainly, if you know me, no, I don't have the patience. So, you know, I don't understand why people wouldn't let Rick do all the work. You do. You, it is important to do that. And then even more importantly, when he tries to explain to you all the, the different things behind it, you got to put him on time frame. So when he calls me, I usually give him 10 minutes and he's got to be very pointed to what, what we need to do to save money. And then we're off the phone. If not, it's three hours of time. Right. Uh, I feel like this is turning into a roast. Is this becoming a roast at this point? <laughs> Well, yeah, I don't know if Carrie and Cal well, uh, get it, but it, I get like 5 a.m. texts from Rick. So. <laughs> uh, 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 Carrie, Carrie's getting roasted right here. Great group of hoteliers, even Carrie. So, uh, <laughs> great. Thank you. Thanks, so, Cal. So, Carrie, the alarm is strong. So, Rick, if you really want to really stop making those three-hour phone calls, one of these gentlemen will give you a hotel to run for a day. Oh yeah, no, no. I, and then you won't be making three-hour phone calls. So I got a, I got a question come from the peanut gallery uh, yeah. over here. Given that the crisis over the past few weeks, uh, you know, uh, have Cal, so maybe we could have you answer this. And the other guys have uh, been able to take traditional fixed costs and make them not fixed. I think it kind of pairs nicely with what we've been talking about here. But um, Cal, let's start with you. Um, what are you seeing in things that you took for granted as being fixed costs that maybe are not so fixed after all? Well. And I, I guess um, I'll start with the first one of even labor. When you look at labor, um, you know, we were operating with 25 to 30 employees. Um, and when we went down to a skeleton crew, we were operating with five or six. Now, granted, with occupancy, you can't right. do that. But, but in that time, we figured out how to really focus on cross training all of our employees. Because, again, we didn't have time whenever occupancies were so high. Right, um, right now, we have that time where we can focus in on how to cross train those folks so that as things start coming back up and occupancy starts going up, we're going to continue that. And it'll be easier to cross train because we've already got so many cross trained employees now. Um, so that's one of the areas where I think we're going to be able to definitely see a, a cost savings going through. The other is when you think about how efficiently we're working, right? So stripping down rooms to doing laundry to, any of those things, um, energy savings. I mean, going through and turning off lights whenever we don't need them. Mm -hmm. There's things of that nature that we just took for granted before. And uh, well, you're used really to doing that because you're probably a dad, so you know nobody turns off the lights in the house anyway, <laughs> right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So those are some of the things that I know for sure um, from a fixed cost. And you know, let's talk about breakfast. That's one of those areas where. You know, we had coffee in the breakfast area. We also had coffee out in the lobby. Do we really need that? I mean, at some point in time, guests are okay going to one or the other. We don't need to have it in both areas. 
on a regular basis. So I, I'm looking at, I know all the brands are sending out all these different initiatives, looking at things, but we're also coming up with our own little company standards of how we want to move forward. So, and I don't know what the brand's reactions will be, but uh, we're definitely looking at some of those things to, to well, put in. Well, you know, from, from my perspective, it's not so much, is this what you know, guests want in two different places? Do they really need that? It's really like, I think everybody wants everything self-contained in their room. So coffee makers in the room, right? I, I, I don't, I never needed a call. I don't drink coffee, but I would never need coffee in the lobby. I need it in my room if I want to make it. Um, so it's really from from my perspective, it's more about a safety issue than it is right. is, is, is a need issue. Um, it's, and I feel that having coffee in the um, lobby right now is not the right answer. I'd Correct. like to I'd like to add to that, but you have to have the right coffee maker in the room because most of them are cheap junk that don't get the water hot enough and the coffee is not flavorful enough. So I'm usually forced to go downstairs to get that coffee. And then I don't know why you guys insist on giving me cups that are this big. When <laughs> I really need a cup that's this big. So I wound up having to take like five cups back to my room and balancing the whole thing. And then before you know it, you guys have to spend extra money cleaning carpets. But what do I, what do I know? There's, there's carpets in rooms today? No, there are. But that is another great place. I think that people could save uh, money. Mark, Carrie, Cal, or any of you guys were moving carpets because the uh, LVT flooring, such as the ones by our good friends over at uh, Porcelanosa, I will give them a plug on, on that. Um, because I understand it takes a lot less time to clean rooms. And right now, that looks very appealing to me. Mark, what do you think about that? No, I mean, I, I think that's something that, you know, you would look at and as the brands have kind of updated their prototype, you know, you're seeing, you know, tile entrance, you know, extending farther and farther in the rooms. You've, you know, you've kind of seen the, the carpet squares. Right. Uh, so you can kind of clean that. But yeah, no, I mean, we, you know, we've looked at a couple of those things and, and you know, you look at the, you know, the true brand. I mean, it's, it's starting to, you know, go to that uh, route as well. So. Yeah, yeah, I, I think personally, you're honest. I personally won't go back to a hotel that has copper in the room. That's just my personal preference. Um, I think uh, that's interesting. No, I won't. Hmm. I, I won't at this point. point there's, there's, I mean, ninety percent of the hotels I go to don't have carpet in the rooms. And um, if I went once and it was really, really clean, and I didn't check out, right. I'd be like, okay, but I'm not going to go back. There's that's no only because you only go to Vegas and stay at the Nomad all the time. I maybe. think that's really what um, it's all about. Well, maybe, but no, but. <laughs> Literally, I think, especially if you're doing a PIP or you're, you're, you're doing new build, I mean, how many people are putting carpet in today? I, I really, you know, I, I, I just don't, especially with the, the standard of hygiene uh, going up every single day uh, after this um, pandemic. So that's just my personal opinion. Kerry, uh, I'm telling what you're dealing with there on the rooftop bar, it looks like a pretty cool hip place. I got to suspect that that property has got some uh, non-carpeted rooms. Uh, unfortunately, no, we do. Don't you know the rule of improv? And, yes. And even if it's not true, come on. <laughs> I, I, you know me, I tell the truth. So no, but, uh, look, I think it's a good call. You look at brands like Indigo and true that are, have moved to that scenario. Um, when we're looking for efficiencies as we come out of this, as well as guest confidence, it makes all the sense in the world. Uh, and I think you'll definitely be seeing more of them probably move that direction. Uh, we haven't. I, I've looked through this process. We're trying to survive. I don't think we right. thought through that piece coming out of this, but I can guarantee you the franchise and the brands will be as yeah, part of their program. Yeah, 100 percent. And one of the things that prevented people from doing it is, well, if I'm on the third floor, somebody below me will hear it. Well, the LVT flooring is actually soundproof. I don't know if you can see, can see soundproof, but it's uh, it, it really reduces the amount of sound. Right. Let me just clarify that by saying it's not necessarily the flooring, but the padding that goes underneath it that really does the magic. So you, if you're going to be researching that particular product, be aware of that. You went to the same tour and clean as I did, didn't you, Glenn? No, dude, I got to go to uh, Porcelanosa's testing facility that they got out in York, Pennsylvania. Oh, wow. And I got to see them do these really cool um, sound tests. So um, they would be like taking a, like a, a giant thing and go boom, boom, boom. And then we'd be in the, <clears throat> in the place underneath it to hear whether or not you could hear like what's going to be the click, the clack of uh, high heels or something above you. And it, it blocked out all that sound. Pretty yeah. impressive. It just, yeah. it just speaks to the nice hotels that Anthony stays at. Oh, that's true. <laughs> uh, that's well, true. Well, you know we're, what? We're, not to plug a brand, but I will tell you this. You know what 99% of the hotels I stay at are? 
Holiday Inn Expresses. Because my production crew, we've traveled for nine years around this country, and our budget for our production was Holiday Inn Express. And 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 that level of hotel. And I was really, 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 really happy with those hotels. And Hampton, a couple of Hampton Inns we went to, and you know, and and and, and Marriott Courtyards, those were the hotels I stayed in. When I go to Vegas, I'm very fortunate people really take good care of me, but typically <laughs> those are the hotels I stay in. So we're building a true by Hilton right now, and that one's all LTV, and uh, we're I, I love it. All of our staff uh, that we've already brought, we're getting ready to open here in about two months, and all of our GMs, DOS, they love it. They're like, this yeah. is going to be the best thing ever. So, awesome. yeah, yeah, we've got we've got one under construction as well, and the same same thing. I mean, everybody's really ecstatic. Yeah, and those, and yeah. those people that haven't heard of the True Brand, hold on, because they're taking they're taking the industry by storm. And they sure are. And um, check out our interview with uh, Taylene Staub on the Checking In with Anthony and Glenn podcast feed from back in late November. I think we ran that one. So and I uh, think we were in out. Vegas. Uh, uh, we did the interview. No, we did the interview with her during HX. Oh, okay. Yeah. But uh, what? That wasn't in Vegas? Uh, we did a bunch of choice stuff in Vegas. Oh. You really want to get back to Vegas. <laughs> yeah, we, I should be in Vegas right now at HD Expo, which is. I'm not saying you have an issue, but it keeps coming up. Yeah, we're supposed to be. We're supposed to both be in Vegas right now, and uh, oh, yeah. So uh, I just went to Vegas 15 times last year, and but, yeah. everything was a conference. But anyway, but the good so, news is we get to be here with you, so much better than <laughs> Vegas. Uh, Rick, I I, I want to hear what you're you're thinking right now. These guys have got some great solutions, but I know there's stuff that um, you're thinking about that we are not discussing yet so what's one other area in the hotel that we might be able to uh, focus on to find some sort of savings that'll reduce overall operational expenses I, I think these guys did it pretty well actually that you know i think when an energy consultant type goes to folks and anthony you kind of alluded to this earlier you know a lot of times when we train sales folks we make it very clear to him to them don't have delusions of grandeur when you reach out to a property they're busy running that property every day. They've got a leak in room 222 that might reach down to the floor right below it. Mm -hmm. And they didn't have the right vendor show up at the right time that day and they're handling stuff. So don't have the delusion of grandeur that providing energy savings to them is going to matter that day. But I think well, we'll, said, well said, my friend. Yeah, no, I get it. And, you know, th the sales guy can't have, the sales gal can't have that delusion of grandeur. We have to recognize that we need to be, as Mark said, and I think it's the kindest thing I've ever been called is persistent. Um, we, we need to be persistent in providing an opportunity for savings for our clients. And right now, I think the biggest danger that we face is that, and I'll, I'll just say it, it it's ambulance chasers. Because right. right now, because everybody's hurting, you're getting calls from everybody, right? Like, I can help you, I can help you, I can help you. Just make sure you're vetting that and you're talking to people who are proven, who have references, and, and who have helped people in the past and can give you true stories of, uh, of folks that they've helped. And, and, and go ahead. I think, a, I think that's a good point, and Glenn's probably getting the same DMs that I'm getting on LinkedIn and everything else, is how many people want to be on this show and how many people have a great idea and how many people say, Anthony, I can help you, Anthony, I can do this, Anthony, I can do that. And I just go, delete, 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 delete. There's one person that actually got my attention. I'm not bringing on the show, but I'll, I'll help them. Um, is because they talked to me first. Sure. They talked to me about, hey, loved your show, saw it last mm -hmm. year, loved this, you know, love what you and Glenn are doing. Oh, and by the way, you know what? And I'll give that person a little bit of my time simply because they went about it the right way. Listen, yes. I'm trying to sell a product, I get that. But they took the time to 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 get my attention. And anybody that says they've watched my show, I'm going to read that because I appreciate you taking time to watch my show. So I think to your point, Rick, it's about the relationship. You know, I, I said it the other day that no matter, you know, if you're selling a product at the end of this or during this, you're going to lose. You don't sell a product, you sell a relationship. Yep. You sell crazy Rick, right? Because, you know, Rick's crazy. He's calling me at 4 o'clock in the morning. He's talking about this. He can't, he's out of breath. He's telling me stories. He's making fun of people with their accents. Like, he's crazy. Did he save me money? Yes, call Rick. I don't feel like I was making fun of him. <laughs> it was a spot on. It was a spot on imitation. And by the way, I closed that deal. I want to. <laughs> and I want you to know, um, I met that guy, and that is spot. Thank you. 
Is, yes. Rick, is Rick mad at me? Because if it is, I'm gonna go hide. <laughs> no. Rick, Rick can never be mad at uh, anybody. That's uh, it's usually my job is to be mad at you. Uh, no, no, but, but, but I, I think the point is, is use your enthusiasm, use your appreciation for what you do, and you'll get people to 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 listen to you. You know, nobody. Well, you. These these guys on here, Anthony, and and other clients that we have, they've been a great resource for us. Because no differently than we're kind of a, an extension of them in trying to be proactive, every person on this screen of these hoteliers have reached out to me about, hey, Rick, is this BS? Is this mm -hmm. legit? And a lot of times I've learned things through that process. So it's a relationship. You said it. And, that, and, and, I'm, sure, and I'm sure you refer, they've referred business for you, which is. The case. They have. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So uh, yeah. we, got, we got something from here. Oh, wrong comment although um that is a very helpful <laughs> statement up there well, the sorry the, area, the, the one right above area. it boom bringing down carbon use is a, an issue any new ideas besides recycling or green initiatives that anybody else is doing on there reducing carbon or does it even matter <laughs> anymore tell when you're in battle mode yeah tell everybody to stay home yeah, <laughs> yeah. You, you guys have reduced your carbon footprint by 80% in your hotels. <laughs> That's horrible. At least you've got a new marketing angle for the future. But uh, seriously speaking, um, anyone want to grab this one? Maybe Kerry? Yeah, I, look, I think you're – I, I think some of this through it is obviously the recycling component. I think the mm -hmm. usage of some of these different chemicals too. I think you're aligning with um, those pieces make a big difference for us and making sure it's the right thing. You know, I know I mentioned the ozone piece. It allows us to take some of that chemical components out of our usage. Those are things that we're, we've done or trying to do. Um, but I mean, I think, Anthony, to your point, I don't have a an answer that's a silver bullet to that right now, but I can guarantee you it's something that is, you know, I think it Cal brought up, you know, while the brands will come up with some things, we're, you know, we're having to use common sense to figure out right. these things as well and, and take those components out of our, our daily use that it, 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 it's normal to do. While I have you guys here, one of the questions I've been wanting to ask people is, you have people in your hotel right now, you have guests in your hotel right now. What's the number one thing they're requesting? Most of ours have been asking about breakfast. Yeah. In what context? They just want something. So oh. we've got grab and go bags, but they're like, what about a hot breakfast, a sandwich, something that we can, you know, that's hearty. So yeah, that for us, yeah. I don't know, Mark, Mark, Gary, you know what? Yeah. The same thing. And what's scary about that cow <clears throat> talk about what Anthony was just asking about so we've moved a lot to prepackage things and put right. actually microwave or toasters out there. But the problem is I'm ending up with more damn trash because of the prepackaged stuff. Right. So it's like I'm caught in a, a, a no win situation. But that, that has been that and probably additional linen has been our big question due to the way in which we're servicing the rooms. Yeah, we're 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 kind of looking at a plated breakfast to see, you know, to give the opera, you know, another option just besides the breakfast bag. But, you know, I don't know what that looks like. I mean, are you going to have to provide choices? Or are you just going to say, hey, here's your meat, here's your, uh, right. you know, carb, here's something else? So, right. Uh, but uh, I was going to say, other option is when they uh, ask you about breakfast, look them up and down, and say. Do you really need breakfast? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, Glenn, Glenn, we don't ever edit our podcast. Um, but we're going to edit this before we put it anywhere. Uh, that was very inappropriate. I know. And I plan on editing in more great jokes just like that. All done in the voice of Foghorn. Like <laughs> <laughs> that, Glenn. Since quarantine, you look like you got a little quarantine rate going. No, I'm just kidding. No, I, 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 I have some quarantine. I, put no, I, think on a, uh, I think the stress is keeping it all for you. Uh, it's, a, it's a mix. I keep eating and I just keep losing it all from it. I feel like I'm uh, in college again where I can eat chicken wings endlessly. Yeah. You know, here, here's an interesting point, though, that, you know, we were going, everybody was going to the bulk containers, you know, right. for the shampoo yeah. and the soap. Now that's become a big issue for us yeah. is I want the individual shampoo. I want the individual soap. So oh, we kind of had to take a step away. And that's going to be interesting to see, you know, if the brands pull back from that, because, you know, obviously cleanliness is the number one key. I mean, we've got to gain everyone's confidence to get them into the hotel. 
So I, I think you may see, you know, the step back from bulk containers. You know, you know, somebody brought that up, and, and I find that very interesting because I want the bulk, and I'll tell you why. Um, that bottle has probably been touched by 30 people before it gets to me, right? Um, the, the bulk, I'm in the shower, okay? I'm washing my hands. That bulk container is probably clean because you guys are cleaning more than you were cleaning before. So, so I'm taking that soap and I'm cleaning with it. So I'm washing my hands. I'm in the shower. I'm in a hot shower or a cold shower. So to me, I, personally, that doesn't make any sense to me. But people have brought that up a lot to me. And I'm like, I don't want somebody to now go and touch three tubes, put it in my room, then touch it again, and then put it back. And like, leave it alone. I know that that one thing that I have to push has got to be clean. So I'm going to take the water, the soap. I'm going to clean it off. I'm going to wash my hands. I'm going to use the soap. And I'm going to go about my business. So personally, I don't understand that mentality. Because then you can say the same thing about the doorknob, the remote control, the ice right. bucket, the bedroom, everything. So right. I, I just, I, I don't get it. I don't know. That's a, that's an interesting uh, uh, p position. I kind of uh, agree with you. And I think a lot of things that are happening right now are emotional gut reactions that right. aren't necessarily going to be something we have to worry about in four months, six months, eight months, you know, or, and that sort of stuff. It's like the person that has a mask on, but he's not covering his nose. I just don't, I don't get it. I saw a great picture on Facebook yesterday of um, – somebody who cut a hole in their mask all around here because it was more convenient to breathe. <laughs> I saw somebody take the mask off and put it in their mouth. So there you yeah. Go. All right, so um, Rick, you know, it's interesting. We're talking about this environmental uh, stuff. And I, I remember that everyone was talking about green, 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 green in 2008. Then the industry fell off a cliff. Suddenly uh, the environment wasn't front and center. What do you think is going to happen when it comes to a lot of these programs that are in place in, in the future? Do you think that um, jurisdictions will continue to create more vibrant programs to get people to do the right thing to reduce environmental impact in the future? I'm an optimist, so I, I kind of believe that people will come up with solutions that can do both. You know, people, people who I like know that. me, yeah, you know, I, I'm a believer and I'm, I consider myself to be an eco capitalist. Right. And, uh, Meaning, I think that most folks will make the right choices if given the right opportunities. Right. And so part of what we do for folks is we try to do that. When you can, you know, Carrie was talking about ozone, right? Ozone makes sense because it's got an ROI. You know, I've been involved with that technology for a long time. And it has an ROI, but now it also has this great hygienic ability to kill bacteria and virus. If it could be done properly, and it's paying for itself, that's where I think people are going to get creative, Glenn, in the green world. Is they're right. going to say, okay, you know, what things can we do that will help these hoteliers make great decisions that are going to help the environment, help carbon footprint, but at the same time, help their bottom line? And that's an eco capitalist. And I would consider all these three individuals eco capitalists. Yeah, yeah I like that's that. That's a good point. Yeah, yeah. Terry? It's a, it's a, it's a good point. Did you say I had a good yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, I did. <laughs> All right, I, I, I yeah, but it yeah. is though, because I mean the thing is, is you know, as we keep talking about cleaning and the and, and the use and the necessity of it, one of the concerns you got to have on this is also what it's potentially going to do to the life of our 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 case goods and our soft goods. Mm -hmm. And so, while we need to clean it, are there other solutions that could be not detrimental to to the to, to the earth and to our environments and so things like the potential can we put an ozone machine into a room potentially you know before cleaning that kills the bacteria without having to use the amount of chemicals and all so i think it's a good point rick i really do and I also want to point out that Rick is doing his point to play his part to reduce the carbon footprint. This is like the only shirt that he has to reduce that has sleeves. So no, <laughs> but he's saved a lot of uh, a lot of material over the years, and that's helped the environment. So so listen, I, I'm getting reading a lot of comments that people really appreciated this content because um, it's been really 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 helpful. So. Uh, before we wrap it up, Glenn usually wraps it up. But what are the last like? What, what do you want people to 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 know about what your hotels are doing? And Rick, I'll throw it over to you of kind of how we can save money, um, you know, and, and then tell everybody where how they can find you. So, Kerry, I'll, I'll start with you. 
Um, look, I think for us, we're just we're we're ready when when it's time to reopen. I mean, that's been our biggest focus is on the safety and and the confidence of the guests and and of our team members. And I think that's been our biggest focus right now is, you know, when when things are open, we're the doors are open right now to to allow our guests back in and have everybody feel confident. I think that's our biggest focus right now. Okay. Yeah, I'll piggyback off what <clears throat> Carrie just said. And, you know, when we got our PPP money from uh, for all the hotels, we actually brought everyone in and said, hey, let's go ahead and deep clean because obviously occupancy is not there, but let's deep clean these rooms. Let's get all the PM stuff done. Let's have these rooms ready to go as people start coming back. And so we've just been focused on, you know, getting the rooms cleaned up and uh, any maintenance issues, things of that nature, getting them all, you know, ready and um so that's that's been our main focus right now yeah i, I mean i just to piggyback off the cleanliness but just you know on the cost control i think glenn you brought up a good point about what we thought were direct costs and i mean you know it's amazing if you go and you talk to uh you know the elevator provider you're going back to looking at trash uh removal you don't need it you know every day or every other day because you're running 20 percent occupancy you know and really start looking you know you if you have a preventive maintenance program you know you know ask those people so i i think it's really caused us to um you know look under every rock because we're not gonna you know we're not gonna skimp on on cleanliness i mean you know that that's first and foremost we've got to have clean hotels we've got to win the customers back but it's looking at you know like you said all those things that were direct costs maybe maybe they aren't so you know really getting out you know getting out and looking at all those things yeah that's 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 right go through every single one of your vendors talk to them Mm -hmm. communicate with them you're doing it in your personal lives right how many of you out there have kicked the can down the road on your car leases right i got (laughs) i'm not using my car anymore they gave me 90 days on both of uh both of my cards i'll throw it on at the end of the period maybe you guys can do creative stuff like that before we get to to rick to wrap it up uh anthony wants me to bring uh this one up uh we're, we're hearing a lot about elevator operators right well yeah and one of the things that what i like about this is it brings it up in the conversation but someone maybe it was yesterday what they're doing is they're putting a little table in the elevator with a little purell little hand wipes and they're putting a little garbage can next to it and that to me i walk in the elevator i'm like thank you i got this all right, I'm going to clean that. I'm going to press the button. Thank you very much. Go wash my hands. I'm going to walk out of it. I feel safe. I have my mask yep. on. If there's a guest in the elevator with me, I'm probably standing on the corner, which we do anyway. So you may not be able to afford an elevator operator because the hotel is not big enough. But if you go in an elevator today and there's not some kind of handy wipe or something to clean the elevators, I'm taking the stairs. Yep. And uh, that's how he's going to stay fit when he's on the uh, 37th floor there. But uh, is there a hotel industry standard that hotels get certification for maintaining a clean property? Jose, the American Hotel and Lodging Association has announced that they are doing a standards in regard to that. So uh, go to ahla.com and you could learn more about it over there. I, I, wrote, I, wrote, I, wrote, tomorrow. I wrote an article um, in Washington Post, I think it's about five years ago. Because going around this country and seeing some of the lower standards that I saw, I, I got really, really upset. And it took me about five months to really make that decision to write the article. So anyone that wants to read it, go to uh, the Washington Post, put my name in, the article will come up. And it's about standardizing cleanliness and hygiene for hotels. And a lot of people aren't going to like this. Um, but what they did for restaurants and bars, the A, B, and C in California and New York worked. So if you go into a a restaurant in New York and it's an A, you feel comfortable. If it's a C, you're not going in. And I I never understood when you look at all the ratings uh, systems, they rate um, your service and they rate your beds and they rate your curtains, the color of your curtains and everything else, but they don't rate the hygiene of the hotel. hotel. So years ago, I I put that out there. So I think there's got to be some kind of standardization that holds us accountable. Now, again, if you're a brand, they hold themselves accountable. They hold everybody accountable. But there's a lot of independent hotels that I've seen, and you, if you ever watched my show for nine years, that have no standards. And so, um, anyway, so I, I can't agree with that more. Excellent. All right, Rick, it's come down to you, sir. How about uh, you've earned it? You've got your opportunity right now for a good, shameless plug. 
I say, I say, no, I'm just kidding. Um, <laughs> I say, I say, don't do that voice. I say, I say, Vegas <laughs> is a great place to travel to. No, um, no, seriously, no, I, I, I look at what's going on, and I, I think that you guys have hit on the head that there are things that y'all think are fixed expenses that aren't necessarily fixed. And it's a matter of being creative. It's a matter of being bold and, and looking for those trusted partners you can find to make sure that you're saving all you can. Mm -hmm. Because right now in this industry, we, we've got to lean on each other and you've got to lean on relationship. You've got to lean on trusted partners. And when you can do that, it makes all the difference in the world. I mean, Anthony, you alluded to it earlier. You know, it's about relationship with people that, you know, are going to be there for you. Not just when things are great, when things are bad. For what we do, it's a struggle sometimes because when y'all were ripping about six months ago, you know, it's it's hard to talk to folks about savings, mm -hmm. you know, because people are, are they, the thought process is let's keep earning, let's keep earning. And what people don't think about is for, for a dollar earned in a hotel, you know, basically you're paying a, a front desk person and you're paying a housekeeping person and you're paying someone to do their laundry. When you find true savings, that dollar, it's a dollar. Mm, yeah, absolutely. And I, I, I hope that throughout this situation we're in, and I pray we get out of it quickly. I think we're going to get out of it quicker than people think. I know that I'm tired of not traveling. And I know a lot of my fellow associates that bother the heck out of y'all are tired of not traveling. Well, you know, the concern there is, is the numbers I'm reading, um, that the, the, the places that are opening up are going up. So hopefully that people are taking – uh, you know, their, their personal protection seriously. So I'm all for opening up. I'm all for moving and for travel. It's, it's our lifeblood. It's my lifeblood. It's how we make a living. Um, but we all have to take personal, we all have to take it seriously. And everything from the elevator cleaning to the hotel, uh, the lobbies cleaning, we got to take it seriously because if we open up and it peaks, we're in trouble. Agreed. No, and I think, I think, I think our industry is poised with leadership not just from like guys like this, but actually from the brands as well. Absolutely. They're going to make that an emphasis. And Absolutely. as long as we make it an emphasis, we make it safe and, you know, we go boldly, but intelligently, there's no problem how quickly we can turn this. With the cow's point, you know, it's also up to the guests to take responsibility. Yes. And, you know, yes. A senator asked me yesterday, do you, do you think that we should make hotels? Uh, uh, no, maybe it's my microphone. Should we make hotels? Uh, have every guest wear a mask, you know, and I didn't answer, I didn't answer that question because I'm not a political guy. I'm not going to answer that question, but that's, that's an interesting question. You know, everybody's going to take their per, their personal safety seriously. So anyway, not to end on that note. So Rick, how can everybody find you? We're scrolling it down here at the bottom. Commercial. Oh, good. Com. Yeah, there I am. You right. check out www.commercialgreensolutions.com or www.foghornleghorn.com. We're available. <laughs> <laughs> Lord Almighty, uh, Mel Blank Jr., look out. Rick West is coming for all of your voiceover jobs in the future. Gentlemen, thank you so much for being here <laughs> and you. being such Thanks a great panel. Thank you. Today. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Take it care. out. Take care. Man, oh man, oh man. What a great show. But first, before we wrap up, I just want to put this up here. Um, Dell had said they've got a cross training worksheet. If you guys want to help your folks out there do a little bit of cross training, go to this thing and you get uh, some resources for you. Uh, Anthony loved, loved hearing some of these ideas, the stuff that we're not normally thinking about every single day. Yeah. You know, and, and basically we've given solutions to hotel owners on how to save money. And again, I don't want to hear about costs are going up for cleanliness. I want to hear about how you're saving money to ensure that that happens. And I think uh, Rick and the team really gave some concrete answers and that's what people look for us. I mean, you know, one of the, the, the things about doing this show every single day is sometimes you repeat yourself and we really have to do creative things to ensure that people are learning from us every single day. So um, great, great show again, Jeff, the producer, and David and Glenn and uh, everyone. Thank you very much. And uh, thank you guys for being here. Of course, be sure to sign up for our newsletter. Text the word hotel to 66866 for more great content. This Sunday's newsletter is going to include all of the specs that all of the major brands have released so far with their new cleaning initiatives and other types of stuff. Anthony, I want to hear about hospitality success. Well, please go to Hospitality Success on Facebook or HospitalitySuccess.com. We're starting a four-week webinar. Uh, it looks like it's going to be the 18th of April. 
which is that a Tuesday? I think it's a Tuesday. And the first one is going to be about the standards of Did you say the eighteenth of April? It's May now. Uh, we don't yeah, have to wait till twenty twenty one, do we? Yeah, we need to make sure I get all the practices right. Yeah. So no, April, uh, uh May, yeah. Yeah, twenty. Sometime in April, sometime in May. I don't know. May, It'll be. In, I think it's May eighteenth, Tuesday, uh, twenty twenty, or it's the nineteenth. 19th. May nineteenth is a Tuesday. Okay, May nineteenth, twenty twenty. We're starting a webinar, four weeks, and uh, the first thing I, I'm working on content uh, to really kind of bring a lot of the standards I'm hearing out there and bring it all to one easy place because a lot of people don't have brands to help. So we're going to try to help uh, provide some of that information. So go to the Hospitality Success Facebook page. Please uh, join us. Right now, I think there's 800 people, and uh, hopefully that will grow and grow and grow and grow. And uh, at 4 o'clock today, Glenn, you're going to be on a meeting where we're going to talk about um, uh, our charity that we're going to start talking about here uh, this week. Yep. So one of the things that you hear, oh, and I didn't tell you this, no. but I'm going to be on a pretty big news station tomorrow. I'll keep oh. you posted on that. Awesome. I'm talking and- about talking Cat. about uh, hotel initiative. So uh, once it's 100% final, I will announce it on my social media and I'll let you know. Great. Um, so um, it's really important to me th- that the people that are struggling in this industry, that they get support. So that's going to be our charity. Uh, and I'm par- partnering with an organization called SCAL, but we'll talk more about it uh, in the next couple of days. Great. Just remember this, everybody. Everything's right. So just hold tight. And thanks for checking in. We'll see you tomorrow right back here at 12 noon Eastern time. Thanks and have a great evening.